AI has now become an integral part of all of our lives and we have been using it almost every day. Specifically, I am talking about all of the chat models, the LLM models which all of these tech companies have been putting out. We use it no matter whatever our role is. A student, a teacher, a professional, a business owner, a dancer, a player, any role that you have, you are using AI chat models every day. But at the end of the day, it still remains a tool. And there are a lot of people who are even paying for better responses from these chat models. You might have often seen that some people are able to get more advantage out of it, whereas it might not work for you. So why is that? That is because you are asking the chat model in a wrong way. And this video specifically focuses on how you can craft a better prompt, how you can ask a better question to the AI chat model so that you get a better answer. And that applies to whatever role you are in. But how do you do that? Let us try to explore a little bit about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. As I had talked about in one of my previous videos, AI is something which you definitely cannot ignore. If you are ignoring AI, that means some other person will take advantage of this tool and they will become smarter than you. So definitely you need to explore in this area. You need to use this tool to become even more smarter and you have to use it in an efficient way. What do I mean when I say using AI in an efficient way? I will show you quickly with a very good example. So what is the difference between a good prompt and a bad prompt? For example, a bad prompt can look something like this. So you are just asking the AI, how can I be more productive? So what kind of an answer are you getting? You are just getting a general answer, setting clear goals, prioritize tasks, all of these times. But whereas, what does a good prompt look like? Now notice the difference between both of these prompts. In a bad prompt, your response is very much generalized. The chat model doesn't know anything about you. But whereas on the right, I have told a lot of information. I am telling it my role, what age I am, where do I live and what is my current situation. So this response is particularly more helpful for you. That is the difference between a good prompt versus a bad prompt. Notice I am using the same AI model, but one response is giving me different answers. Why? Because I have given it more information. I have told it much more things to begin with. And that makes all the difference how you can take better advantage of the AI tool that you are using. Rather than calling it AI, I consistently use the analogy of a tool. Because think about it, when you have to do any household task, what is the first thing that you do? First of all, you need to pick the right tool. For example, if you want to hammer something, you won't go searching for a screwdriver, right? You want the right tool for the job. And it is very similar in the AI world also. First of all, you need to understand what tool will be specifically helpful for your use case. And that involves a little bit of exploring. Because right now, there are so many different LLM models available that sometimes it can get confusing. But you can narrow down what you want to see. For example, we will look at some of the very popular models. First of all, you all know about ChatGPT. And this is the most popular model that everyone knows. It has some distinctive traits and that can define if you want to use this or others. For example, ChatGPT is very creative and you can explore almost any idea with it. It has a distinct trait that it thinks out loud and it will often show you multiple angles. When it gives you responses, it will also tell you, okay, this is what I'm thinking and that is why this is the response that I'm giving you. So these are some of the things that can help you decide if chat GPT is the right model for you. For example, if you are creative problem solving or brainstorming, but it has some weaknesses also. Sometimes it can be overly verbose and it hallucinates as well. When I say hallucination, it means that it is coming up with information of its own that doesn't even exist. So sometimes you have to be cautious and check the information before you implement whatever chat GPT is telling you. The next model is the Gemini model. Gemini is offered by Google and its persona is that it is kind of a research librarian who will try to do Google searches and then give a response to you. It has its own distinct 
trait, its strength, its weaknesses and its best use. So whenever you are trying to research, whenever you want the latest information, then Gemini might be more helpful for you. The other model that everyone has been talking about is Claude and it is offered by Anthropic. Now this model talks in a very friendly manner. It will try to list out all of the points and it is kind of very, very cautious. For programmers, it kind of acts as a senior engineer who will look at multiple different aspects and then guide you to a correct solution. I have also found some specific things about it. For example, it has a trait that it will admit that, okay, I am uncertain about this and you need to proceed with caution. And that becomes a very good use case when you want to use Claude when you're cautious about things, when you're using it at your work. You want to be expert and you want to take very careful measures when you're actually deploying out something. And when I talk about work life, you cannot ignore Copilot. Copilot is something that has been integrated into GitHub and it comes with VS Code as well. So this particular chat model is kind of a very efficient office assistant who is just focused on getting things done. It responses are very, very focused and they will target what you're actually asking. It doesn't like to explore all of the other areas unless and until you ask it to do it. So that is what makes it different. You can actually see all of these models. They have different traits and different use cases. You might have to explore a little bit. Okay, this model is actually helpful for me. And as of this recording, these are certain traits. But as these models evolve, things can certainly change. And you might have to explore again that, okay, I'm starting off a new project and this model might be helpful for me. Similarly, when you start to pay for all of these models, for example, chat GPT, and then you have Gemini Pro. And similarly, you have Anthropic paid models also. Then you have to be even more cautious because you are actually paying money to get back those responses. So unless you are selecting the right tool for the job, you are maybe not taking the maximum use out of your money being paid. And everyone wants a best value for their money, right? Now, once you have chosen the perfect tool, how do you actually use it? How do you make sure that the responses that you're getting back are actually valid and they will actually apply it to your use case or whatever project you are working on? You can be a chef, you can be an architect, but you need to provide it the correct information so that it can give you back the correct result as well. And to do all of that, I will show you a method that works almost very good in almost every use case. I call this the craft methodology. For starters, try to think about AI as a tool. And it is a function which behaves on whatever input you are giving it. If you are giving it garbage, then you can expect garbage in return. That is how the programming journey works. So first of all, you need to understand how can I craft a better prompt? How can I give it the correct information? And you can easily remember it using this method. So what is an example of a bad prompt? How can you feed in garbage? Let us say you just tell your AI agent, okay, I want to learn Python. Or you just tell it, okay, tell me how to learn Python. Now think about it. This prompt is very, very ambiguous. The AI doesn't know if you're a junior, if you're a senior, what is your experience? Where do you want to go to? What is your time frame? None of the information. So generally, you will get a very generic answer and that is not valid for you. So the first thing that you need to provide is called context. Context means you are explaining, okay, what is your current situation? So here is how you can get started. For example, you can say that, okay, I'm a 33 year old software engineer with five years of experience in Java, and now you are new to Python. So, okay, the AI model is now building a profile about you. It knows your current situation and it has got some context. So now it knows some of the information where it wants to target its response. The next part is R or role. Role means how you want your chat model to behave. So I am telling it act as a senior Python mentor who is proficient with full stack development. So now you are trying to set up a scenario in which your AI model should behave. The AI model can treat you differently. If you ask it to be strict, it will be strict. If you ask it to be a teacher, it can assume that role. If you ask it to be a therapist, it can assume that role. I am telling it, okay, act as a senior member of a team who is proficient with full stack development. 
So now AI is going to assume what you want it, how you want your information to be fed. So this is what the role stands for. The next part is action. How do you want your chat model to act? What information are you expecting from it? For example, I say, okay, create a structured four week learning plan for Python, which is focused on a hands on project. Now, this is also something which can help you. For example, when you are learning about Python, it does not know currently, okay, what is your time frame? You can learn Python in an year. You can also learn Python in a day. You are telling the chat model, okay, I have four weeks available. And sometimes you can tell it, okay, I will learn better if I have a hands-on project. Think about it. You are trying to develop your profile. You want to have something published on GitHub. So a hands-on project is actually helpful because you will learn along the way. And then you're also building a side-by-side -side project. You are telling the chat model how to act. What kind of a response do you want? You can also have different action models. You can also say that, okay, give me a structure by which I can make video tutorials. You can say, give me a structure by which I can write down PowerPoint slides. So all of this difference will actually decide what kind of a response do you get back. The next part is format. Format means how do you actually want the response? So I can say something like provide the plan as a table with week number, topic and exercise. This can actually help you to keep a track of your progress. So I'm telling it to give me in a table format. This way I can keep marking this table with all of the topics that I have done. You can also ask it to be in an Excel sheet. You can ask it to be in form of PowerPoint slides. So all of this information is not actually helping the AI. It is designed to help you because every person has a different method to learn. Some people prefer notes. Some people prefer worksheets. Some people just prefer checklists. So it just depends on what is beneficial for you and how you can take advantage of the AI tool. So now you have decided, okay, I want everything in a table format. And the last part is very, very important. And that is the tone. Tone means how you want the AI model to behave with you. I am telling it to be, okay, explain me in a friendly, encouraging tone as if you are mentoring a colleague. So now, because the AI has assumed a role, this role can be very, very different. If you have a senior member, they can be very strict, they can be very disciplinary, or they can be very encouraging, very friendly. So you have to tell your AI model how to behave. Because some people thrive under pressure. Some people don't like pressure at all. So you are defining the tone. I am telling it, okay, I want you to be encouraging. This way, whenever you are cross-questioning the AI, let us say you face a problem and now you are typing a response. Okay, I face this problem. The AI model remembers this tone and it will try to improve you. For example, if you are in your programming journey, you can say that, okay, tell me the answer or tell me the hint, but directly do not give me the answer. I want to work out the solution myself. That makes all of the difference. And that is how you are taking better use of AI. So now when you have combined all of this, you actually got a complete pattern, how you can craft better prompts for AI. And when I have combined all of this, I now get a perfect response. And this response, as you can see, is so much helpful and so much beneficial than the first prompt that we started with. Just help me learn Python. That doesn't tell you anything. But this is much more catered to me. It is designed around me and the response that I will get, it will also be very beneficial for me. Time for the fun part now. Let us actually try both the prompts and see what difference do you get. First of all, we will look at the bad prompt, the garbage in garbage out. So what you see over here is actually not garbage. It is still a lot of valuable information, but it is not catered to me because there might be a lot of things which I already know and they might not be my focus. Now let us try a prompt which we specifically develop for ourselves. Here is the prompt and now when I ask it, okay, just look at the difference that it made. It now gave me a complete learning plan which I can use to do my entire project. It has actually told me that this is the project that you can work on 
here are the different four weeks and this is the complete plan. This makes all the difference. And this is called the craft principle. If you want to take away one thing from this video, let it be this. Just start using this craft principle in your AI prompts and you will see a dramatic improvement in the responses that you are getting. And there is no limit on the context you can provide. The more information you give, the better and the more tailored your responses will be. In fact, just go and try it out now. Whatever problem that you had in the first place, try to go back to your chat model and use this craft principle. Just pop that in and tell me the response that you get. In fact, a good idea will be that you take up that prompt and post it in the comment section below. I would love to read how you have been using this principle to have a better prompt for yourself. Also tell me the best difference that you found out when using this principle. Also mastering a single prompt is just the beginning. What happens if you want to build out a huge project? What about complex debugging? How do you go about that? How do you cross question the AI? What is AI prompt chaining? I'm gonna explore all of these topics, so make sure you're subscribed. In the last, I would just like to call out all of the channel members who have been supporting my channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it helps me to bring out all of these creative videos every week. Also remember that now you can schedule one-to-one -one sessions with me and we can discuss about almost anything. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. Until then, see ya.